Aloha and welcome back to our pineapple video. And the next step in our um, video is to show you how you can take a pineapple block and how versatile it can actually be for you. Our very first block that we're going to do is one that everybody is really familiar with. It is a simple block and we've seen it in all kinds of ways. When we look at our pineapple block, we can see that it has two sections. It will have a dark and a light. And like our log cabin block, it starts with a central block right in the middle. When we put this block together and sew it, this is what it looks like. Now, things that we can do with this block is that we can easily change it just by changing the size of the block. This finishes as an eight inch block. It could, however, be a six inch block, 10 inch block, whatever you want to make it. Things we can do to change it are very simple. We can make our center square larger or smaller. We can turn around and we can make our rows that run through here narrower or wider. We can also make our corner squares larger or smaller. Now when we put our squares together, we get our pineapple block. And we can see it actually as it begins to come together. Because a pineapple block has several sections. And it's important to know these sections so that later when you're designing and being creative, you know how to deal with them. When the four corners come together, it creates what is known as a star. The area around the star is just called the circle. But now you'll notice that as we have brought this together, we have started creating a sub-pattern. And our sub-pattern, excuse me, um, is actually referred to as a windmill or Matisse cross. Now, we can take this and do all kinds of things. I'd like you to notice here when we have our squares that come together, that we have a single piece of fabric here. Because later on, we're gonna just make a slight change and that will totally look different. The easiest way to change this block is to simply change the color motif. And when we do that, this is what our block looks like. Now we can take this block and we can change it just a little bit. And in doing that, we can create a totally different look. And how we're gonna do that is by simply taking one little block or row and changing the size. In this, we see we have a wider row here than these that are there. Now this block, as well as the one I just showed you, will be available for free on a PDF file that you can load um, at the end of this video. Now when we take these blocks and we put them together, you get something that looks like this. And because we have made one row a different size, if we look now at our center star, we see there are two rows of fabric. You could have, if you wanted, actually changed this one row and create a whole other pattern you know, within the middle. So there are all kinds of things that you can do um, with your block. Now another thing that you can do with this block is you create what people refer to as pineapple slices. Pineapple slices are really fun in addition to the fact they taste good if you're eating a real pineapple. In this case, they become very creative. And what happens is that we take our rows and we sort of subdivide them by adding another line. And I like to think of those sections as A and B. And when we sew that together, 
we get something that looks just like this. And although this blum looks like it's really, really complicated, it's actually extremely simple to make. We have our center block, and we'll call that A in this case, and then the little rows that go around it are B, sadly. Then we go to what becomes our first row, and we can see, or our second row, excuse me, our second row is there, and what we do is we just sort of subdivide that second row, and we will take a row of fabric, that will be our A fabric, then we put our B fabric down on it, and that makes one row. So it's just simply subdivided. Think of it as just having an extra seam. And so very, very simple to put together. Now these were some ways that were a little more creative, but one of the things that we could do is just very simply take a pattern, and this is a purchase pattern, and this is actually by um, the Fat Quarter Shop, which I showed you earlier. And this is a finished six inch block. And I wanted to do something a little bit different. So before I had my computer program, I took a piece of graph paper, drew out the design I wanted, and then I cut out my fabrics. And when I cut out my fabrics, I just simply went through each of these little blocks and labeled where the fabric would go. You can also cut your fabric out and then just sort of glue it in place. Once I had finished my very first square, then I had like a master for my block, and then I just kept looking at it and using it. But when I finished with it, this is what I ended up with. And this is just simply by taking a regular block and just changing the layout of your pattern. So we didn't even have to do anything fancy. All we did was just change the pattern, the fabric that are in it. And if you look really closely, you can see it is still a pineapple block. Here's our center block. Here are our rows. They kind of look a little bit like they're flying geese. And then we have our other rows that are going this way. And it's a really small block, so there's, there are not very many rows to it. And then the outside row, um, I used a gray, which gives it the impression of having a fancy little border, when in reality, this is all just part of your pineapple block, and very, very simple. Now, the other thing that's really kind of nice about a pineapple block is if you have ever thought that you might want to try and finish a quilt yourself, this is obviously very easy to do because it's just a teeny little wall hanging. But what is nice about it is if we look closely, if we stitch on the ditch, or in the ditch, or near the ditch, and for some of us it's more like stitching in the ditch -ish, sort of, um, we create all kinds of little sub-patterns. We have diamonds and X's and all kinds of things that are going through here. And so it's very, very simple um, to learn how to quilt just using a stitch in the ditch technique. Now, for several years, I've been collecting fabric that I wanted to make into a quilt. Didn't know what the quilt would be, but I knew I really liked the fabric, so whenever it would go on sale, I'd try and buy some on sale. My favorite $12 fabric is the one that's on sale for five. So when it would go on sale, I would try and purchase it. And what happened is that I was looking on the internet, and when I started looking on the internet, I found something really interesting, and I thought, that's, that's exactly what I want. It was a quilt from the 1800s, and it was done up as a scrappy pineapple quilt. And then I went to look for the pattern. It was not in my pineapple pattern. So I'm going, wait a minute, this is the 1800s. They're just beginning to play with pineapple quilts. I'll bet you anything, this is probably just a straight off log cabin quilt. And that's exactly what it was. It turns out some people call them steps, some call them stairs, um, but whatever you call it, this is a very standard log cabin pattern. And when you do it as a log cabin, 
It's really simple. It looks like this. And there are all kinds of different versions of these. Um, you have church steps, courthouse steps, you name it. They're just all kinds of steps. But this is what it looks like when it's done up in steps. And if you look carefully, you see steps. And if you had more, you just keep having rows and rows of steps. But that was not the pattern that I saw. The pattern I saw was a little bit different. And it looked like this. When it was sewn together, and it was sewn as separate blocks, it came together, and it looked like this. And you can see now, we took a log cabin, and we just kind of played with it a little bit. Now we have our center block, which comes together, there are actually four blocks, and then we go out from there. And as we start sewing them together, we start re repeating the exits that are running down the middle. Now the next step that we're going to show you is how to take these blocks and turn them into quilts. Unless your goal is just really to have pot holders. But for most of us, we want to create a quilt. And a pineapple block is a great way to create a quilt because it's so simple um, that we don't have to worry about messing up the pattern when we're creating our quilt in different sizes. So we'll see you for that next video in just a few minutes.